Hey, it's Alex Yao here at YaoRealEstate.com and starting December. So this is your market update for December 2022. So we have quite a few things to go over today. We're going to go over the stats as usual. We're going to go over some of the rate hikes that's been happening. We will talk about a couple of things that's coming January 1st of 2023. These are going to be very important for, for you to know if you're looking to buy or sell in 2023. So this includes the new rescission period or the cooling off period, as some call it, the federal banning of foreign buyers as well. And we're also going to be touching a little bit on the rental restrictions that's been lifted recently. And at the end, we'll give you a little reminder as homeowners uh, what to budget for in the next year. So first, the stats. In November 2022, we noticed that Vancouver East uh, prices have gone down 0.2%. Vancouver West single detached houses went down 1.9%. In regards to townhomes, Vancouver East went up 2.3%. And Vancouver West went down 0.2, uh, sorry, 2.1%. Um, for condos, Vancouver East went up 0.6% and Vancouver West went down 1.3%. So they're all kind of just going up and down a little bit. Uh, I think we're kind of reaching a bottom here. That's also why the rates went up again. Anyways, these are the stats over the last month. And we will move on to the rates. So as you know, the rates went up again, 50 basis points. So now the overnight rate is at 4.25%. Now, just to put that into perspective a little bit, in the beginning of the year, we were at 0.25%. And now we're at 425 So the most recent hike, uh, a few days, actually yesterday, as of this recording, yesterday, the rate hike was 50 basis points. And how does that translate to a variable rate? So it's approximately $300 per million dollars borrowed. Uh, which is, for simpler terms, $30 every $100,000 borrowed. So let's say you have a million dollar mortgage, your variable rate payment per month may go up approximately $300. And let's say you have a $2 million mortgage, go up $600, approximately, right? So that's per month. So that's hopefully the last we're going to see in a while, but it's definitely the last one of the year. Uh, the next announcement is at the end of January. So they're obviously trying to cool off the inflation uh, that's occurred in, you know, over the last over the last couple of years. And hopefully this is helping. Market-wise, it's definitely cooler now, but it, the prices have not dropped as much as they said it would. Um, nor do I expect it to, right? At the end of the day, these are, you know, it's equity for local citizens, the local residents. Things are still selling right now. The good properties, the well-priced properties are still selling. It's no longer the days when you list a price at any price you want and you get multiple offers, and so forth, right? So now it's a lot more on a level playing ground, which is great. Uh, great for buyers. For sellers, you know, you really have to be well prepared before you list. So keep that in mind. Okay. So a couple of things coming in less than a month, January 1st, 2023. It's going to, well, one of those is really going to change the game. The rescission period or the cooling off period. This applies to residential resale markets only. You're probably familiar with pre-sales. If you've ever bought a pre-sale before, you have a seven day rescission period where during that time, you can back out for any reason with no penalty. This is similar, but yet a little different. So for residential resale market, uh, this is to protect the buyers in a heated market, right? So we have 10, 20 offers. Now, when you want to make a strong offer, a lot of people go in subject free, as you know and then find out, you know, refine their own financing or home inspection and things like that afterwards, that doesn't affect the deal. So those things, if let's say a buyer can't get financing or the, there's something wrong with the property or a home inspector can find out, you can do all that within the first three days and you can back out for any reason. However, there is going to be a penalty, 
of 0.25% of the purchase price. So let's say you make a subject free offer on a, a million dollar property. You, pay, you offer a million dollars and it's accepted and subject free. So now it's firm, right? Well, it used to be. Now you have three days to exercise your right of rescission. So let's say hypothetically the second day you get notice from your bank. Oh my God, I you can't get the financing because the rates just went up again and you're just a little bit short. You can pull out, you can pull out of the deal, but the penalty would be for a million dollar purchase price would be $2,500. So for a two, $2 million property, the penalty would be $5,000. So this starts January 1st. Now, how does that affect sellers if you're looking to sell? So this is where preparation becomes essential. And knowing how to navigate these new legislation is absolutely essential. So let's say you get 10 offers and they all bid each other up, right? Like we've seen before. People just want to win. They want to, they want the property. They want the home. They're, they're tired of looking. Uh, it's in a heated market. So someone offers $2 million on your property. And you're happy about it, right? It's subject free. It's as firm as it gets, although not perfectly firm anymore like before. So it's as firm as it gets, subject free, $2 million. You sign it, they sign it, and deal's done. Now, the next day or the second day, let's say the buyer gives you notice, sorry, we can't move forward with this deal. They're exercising their right to rescission. Now, all the other ones that bid under $2 million, say 1.9, 1.8, 1.85, whatever, are these still around? They've probably started looking at other properties already. They probably uh, kind of lost interest a little bit because of uh, not being in a bidding war anymore, not having competition anymore, which is fine for buyers. I mean, that's just the natural, uh, natural way of the market, right? But now you lost out for what? For a $5,000 penalty, you could potentially lose out $100,000 in purchase price. So you have to be able to navigate through this. Um, I would have one suggestion right now is to ha always have a backup offer. It doesn't matter if it's a subject free offer that you're accepting, always have a backup offer, okay? Uh, that's signed at the same time as the bidding war. So that's one way to kind of protect yourself a little bit. It's not foolproof, but it will definitely help. And there's a lot of things that's going to come up that we're going to learn as time goes on. So be prepared, hire the right people and know how to navigate through what you want to have. So another thing that's coming in January 1st, 2023 is the federal banning of foreign buyers. And that's going to take effect for the next two years. So what that means is that if someone's not a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, they can no longer purchase a property here in Canada in the next two years. Is that really going to help? I don't think so. Um, over the last year or so, stats show that foreign buyers have been under 2%. I think it's around 1.3, 1.4% of all purchases. It's not really going to affect much. I think it's more for political image but at the end of the day if it helps the locals if it helps us if it helps your family the next generation hey i'm all for it so we'll see how that plays out we'll have an update for you next year uh after this is called goes on for a while rental restrictions they've been lifted most of them anyway in the last couple of weeks as you probably heard uh, on on the news or or read it in articles and news articles and so forth rental market has been so heated in the last year even though the resale market has gone downhill so to combat that the new premier david Eby, he has legislated the removal of rental restrictions in strata properties so a lot of older buildings you probably notice that have you know, a lot of rental restrictions whether it's no rental or a maximum number of rentals these are all gone so now anyone can rent their property given that it's not a senior property which means 55 years old 
or older. Third of all, there are strata laws that says only 55 years old or older can live in certain complexes. So those remain. Now, there are also some properties that says adult only, so 19 plus. That's removed as well. So that to that helps, you know, young families. You know, a lot of times young families in Vancouver, they have to rent, they have a child. The child is obviously under 19 and they're forced to move. That's not fair. So I'm very happy to hear that. Now, uh, there are some strata properties that says, you know, uh, uh, minimum rental is a year, for example. That's gone too. Now, you still can't do short-term rentals. You still can't do Airbnb. That's still part of the city bylaws. But most of the restrictions are gone. So hopefully that'll increase the supply a little bit and help uh, local local younger generation to, to find better housing options and stabilize that, that market a little bit. So we'll see next year how that affects the market. So just a reminder for you homeowners, but when you're budgeting for the property taxes, that's, that should be mailed out to you already if, and, uh, or in the next little while. Property taxes are going to go up compared to last year, despite the market downturn in market prices. Why is that? Because it was assessed on July 1st of this year when the market just started turning downwards. So at that time, the market is still high, and the property value was uh, calculated at that time. So your property tax is based off of your market value at that time. So be prepared for that and budget accordingly. And lastly, we're going to sign off for the year. What's that? Oh, this is Truffle, my new pug. Well, new as of April of this year. And uh, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. A happy new year and most importantly a safe holiday season and we hope to see you again next year